Building an account to do as much damage as possible is really important on this game. When you are competing with others on bosses for example, it's whoever does the most damage wins. Here are a few tips to help you increase your damage. Now let's start by bringing up my lovely character. The stats you want to focus on are attack, that's quite obvious, that needs to be as high as possible. You want some hit, otherwise you have a higher chance to miss when you attack. You need crit for the critical hits. And you also need pierce as well. That's against the opponent's block rate you can see here. Out of the equipment, it's the shield and the weapon that increase attack as the base attributes. So those are the pieces of gear you want to focus on first. You can see here, I have an Apex 15 Fury Greatsword and an Apex 20 Shield now. I am focusing on upgraded gear. You can see here this is upgraded gear and this is the gear that's dropped directly from the dungeon. But the shield and the weapon are the most important here. Now I don't think heroes matter too much when trying to do as much damage as possible. They generally don't do that much damage. I'll just bring up the heroes page anyway. I use Siegfried, Athan, Apollo, Artemis, and Razor. Now I do have some of the UR heroes, for example, Brunhilde, but as they are quite hard to promote, I don't normally use those. I just focus on the SSR heroes instead. Now because heroes don't do that much damage, I do have a formation that looks like that and I generally use that on bosses. It's just my main character with one of my heroes. That might not seem that exciting but that formation seems to do more damage than the first team here, mainly because the heroes take so long to attack. For skills, my main hitting skill is Thousand Blades. so. I want to make that as strong as possible. Furious Strike is commonly used as well. My strategy in battles is normally to use Furious Strike repeatedly until I can use Thousand Blades, then get that going and do the massive damage. I sometimes use Blood Rage when the boss's health is getting low. Also Demonic Slash is good for healing. Crimson Blades is good for Magic Battlefield. The condensed skill at the bottom just increases block rate, so not too exciting. But with my class, I think Furious Strike and Thousand Blades are the way to go. If we go over to the Forge next, I'll just bring up the Socket page. I think it's important to have the Attack Gem, Crit Gem and Pierce Gem on all the equipment. Then you can mix up the last two gems at the end. For example here I have used Defence and Resilience. For some of the equipment though, I have gone with Defence and Block instead. I've done half and half. There we go, you can see that there. And I think that's pretty much optimal if you're trying to do as much damage as possible. If we bring up the Enchant page, I haven't really optimised this but all of them do have attack on the enchants. You can see here, have a mixture of other attributes as well, but they do all have attack. Most of them have hit as well. The evolve page, this doesn't really matter too much. I can close this from here. There's not too much else I need to talk about on that page. Having a good pet is really important. For example, the crystal puppet here has unlimited life and can be used infinitely. Once you have an unlimited life pet, what you want to do is try and put attack skills on. Those can be bought from the trade center. They cost black diamonds. What I've done here is put undulation. I think that's one of the key skills. Enhance, I think that's a key skill. And I will try and get magic heart. The problem is when you use a skill, it's random which skill it overwrites. So it can be quite frustrating. And if you get any points, put it into strength like I have done here. 
But I think that's the basis of pets. The three key skills again, enhance, undulation, and magic heart. I will skip goddess and move over to awakening. Now the skill here is better in my opinion than the skill here. However, it's harder to learn. So I still have this awakening as my main one. I may change later game, but that's something I thought I'd bring up. This awakening skill, demon blood, seems quite weak and as such, I rarely use it. Over to holy wings. What you want to do is focus on getting the holy essences since they increase attack. Then obviously upgrade, but only do this when there's a consumption event on. Don't use your holy feathers before that. Now over to the winged soul. I have gone with dark on this. The arrogance over here is what increases attack, but I have gone equal with all of these pretty much. I may focus mainly on my arrogance though, just to try and get the attack up. But there we go, that's pretty straightforward as well. With mounts I always do attack first. This is another item you want to use when the cross server consumption event is up though. The beast spirit stones you can see here. I only have health to do here, then it will reach the 1300 stars. Hopefully I will complete that relatively soon. Relics are extremely important so I will bring this up. Now the ones I have equipped currently are the Dragon Heart, Holy Grail, Skid Bladnir, struggle to say that, and Death Tome. Now Dragon Heart is defence so not optimal for a damage build. That's useful though because of the percentage increase to defence. Holy Grail. This has a chance to trigger Saints Crusade on a block, increasing the attack by 20%, so that's a pretty significant attack increase. Skid Bladnir. 15% chance to trigger the Endless Breeze that increases attack on the back row. It's important to make sure you are on the back row if you are using this for obvious reasons. Otherwise, you will get a defense buff instead. Death Tome increases 25% attack per enemy kill at this level. Useful in Endless Trial. Not so useful against bosses, though. Then if we go across, the other ones I think are useful. Miss Tiltin. I don't know how to say that. I'm not even going to try. Attacks have a 5% chance to deal double damage, so that's a pretty good relic if you can get it. Then get near as well. Critical strikes deal 10% additional damage to the enemies adjacent to the target. Another potentially good one if you can get it. If I bring up the Myth Cloths here, it doesn't really matter too much which one you put the orbs into since it takes the stats from all of these to you so to speak there are a couple of these that i think are important though aries now you might be surprised to hear that a shield can do damage but when the shield is broken it can actually do pretty serious damage it's worth trying this against bosses for that reason deals 115 percent attack plus 2000 damage to the attacker when the shield is broken then a couple of other important ones. Leo, this damages all the enemies when the battle starts. This is useful in events like Magic Battlefield and Goddess Guardian. If you are strong enough, you can wipe out the enemies instantly with this Myth Cloth. Then the other one that's important is Draco over here. This one just hits a single enemy, unlike Leo, but it's a higher percentage attack boost. This is another good choice against bosses if you don't want to use Ares or Leo. The Force Book cards can give huge stat bonuses. These cards are easily obtained from Sky Tower. Valkyrie card here for example, that's 40,000 attack at level 19 and that's absolutely huge. If I scroll down a bit, the orange one's not quite as big of a boost but still you can see here an extra 2,250 attack. 
Lunar Goddess here as well increases attack. The main one though is the Valkyrie card here. As I mentioned, that can be obtained from Sky Tower and gives a huge boost to attack, so that's quite an important one to work on. Plus there's the upgrade here, once you have upgraded a certain amount of cards, that will increase your stats even further. That makes that really important. For runes, what I've done is equipped three attack runes. Now I know you can't get a resonance with this, but I think that may well be optimal for dealing damage. There's one of the attack runes, there's the second, and there's the third. Then I have a hit rune here as well. Crit rune there, and a pierce rune. I could equip a couple more of those at some point, but for now that's what I have done with the runes. Finally, let's bring up the Apex page. Now for damage, you want the damage bonus. That's really important. That should be the first skill you learn here. Get that up to 10%. Then you can go for the attack up bonus. You may want to consider damage reduction as well though, as it's a percentage damage reduction. But the key ones here for damage are the attack up and the damage bonus here. Damage bonus being the most important one. Apex talents. Focus mainly on the war if you want to do damage. There's quite a few skills here that are important. For example, the armor breaker, gifted attacker, or just the basic attack up. There we go. Just going through these here. Demon Claw, I don't really need with my class as I have Thousand Blades, but with some other classes you may want to work on that skill. And there we go, those are what I've done for the talents. Then the Genesis Crown is the blue one on the left that increases attack, so this should be the one you focus on the most when you are upgrading if you can evolve it as well. That would give you both attack and pierce, as you can see here. So it's an important one to try and work on. And there we go, I think I'm pretty much done with this video. I hope you found that interesting and helpful. If there's anything I have not covered in this video, please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing is always very much appreciated. I've included the previous video on the screen. Check that out if you want to do so. You can also subscribe from here if you want to. And thanks for watching.